Chapter 16 Enjoy the Now A regrettable tendency many of us experience in our journey through life is not allowing ourselves to be happy or satisfied in the now. For example, when we're in grade school, we can hardly wait until we're in junior high school. Then, when we're in junior high, we can't wait until we're in high school. In our early teens, we can hardly wait to be 16 or so so that we can drive a car. Then we're waiting to graduate from high school, to leave home, then to get married, etc. We seem to be seldom, if ever, satisfied and content to enjoy the here and now. We don't seem to know how to stop along the way, smell the roses. And in some cultures, we can't enjoy or we think we're not supposed to enjoy life until we're perfect, whatever our incorrect perception of perfect is. Why is it that so many of us think we can't enjoy life to its fullest until we have arrived at our destination? As our years start adding up and we become more aware of qualities in our life that we want to improve, we tell ourselves that we'll be happy when we've conquered this or that bad habit. Or we'll be happy if we live through the next crisis. Well, for sure we'll be happy when we lose 30 pounds. And oh yes, we really must have that new car. And then we'll be happy. It seems we haven't learned the art of enjoying where we are now. Too many of us live with fear and anxiety as our constant companions. Always in dread of the future. Worried that we will repeat the past. Remember when you were learning to ride a bicycle? Were you able to stay up the first time you tried? Did that deter or defeat you? You accepted the possibility that it just might take more than one try. Each time you fell, you were determined to do it over and over again until you finally figured out what the combination was that would keep you up and balanced. While you were going through this process, didn't you enjoy the now of it? knowing you would eventually be triumphant? Remember the exhilaration of finally being able to succeed? It was the journey that was exciting. If we can realize and recognize that the growth process is something to be savored and relished along the way, that enjoying the challenges of the now and seeing the positive aspects they bring to our life as we experience them Our existence will be so much more rewarding. Our being is developing, and it is necessary to have these kinds of experiences in order to accomplish our growth. It would be wise for us to remember as we lead and guide the lives of our children, or anyone else for that matter, that we can't expect them to accept our knowledge, understand what we understand, or be where we are now in our knowledge and understanding. They simply don't have our point of reference. We can guide them to correct principles, but we need to allow them their own experiences and allow them to grow at their own speed. We can share our knowledge and experiences with them, but it is not wise to insist that they see things from our reference point. Nor do we want to control their thinking or their lives Our purpose in their lives is to guide, enlighten, and direct rather than to control. We are sharing our knowledge or understanding with someone. We accomplish more by endeavoring to reach them from where their understanding is, not from where ours is. They will be more open and better able to comprehend and absorb new principles when we do this. In other words, allow them their own rate of growth. A good guide to go by is don't want something for someone else more than they want it for themselves, whether it be understanding or conditions. If we sincerely desire to assist in lifting and building others, the greatest example we can give anyone is our life working for us. Cynthia A beautiful 22-year-old client is a very bright, capable person. 
Her biggest problem is her mother, who always wants to control what takes place in Cynthia's life. Cynthia never seems to be able to satisfy her mother. According to her mother, there is always something that needs to be changed or corrected in Cynthia's life. No matter who she is dating, Cynthia's mother always poses the big question as to whether he's good enough for her. It seems her mother has a definite picture of the type of young man she wants her daughter to marry, and unless the person Cynthia is dating measures up to that picture, then he's not good enough. Familiar story? Well, right now, Cynthia is suffering from anorexia big time. Often, the cause of this malady is not being able to satisfy parents, particularly mother. Her mother wants something more for Cynthia than Cynthia wants for herself, and Cynthia is becoming an emotional basket case. The sad part about mother is that she lives in constant fear that her beautiful daughter is not going to make the right choices. If we as parents only realized the deep emotional scars that are embedded in the soul of a child from parents trying to run their life for them, particularly after the child is old enough to make his own decisions. We would surely back off and allow them their own experiences without interfering, unless invited by them to advise them. But even then, it's important that we judiciously point out their alternatives, helping them to recognize the possible natural consequences of their choices. Reason with them, encourage them but then allow them to make their own choices and support them in their decisions, regardless of whether we think they're wise or not. They will learn from their mistakes. But when we make a mistake, here again, if we just counsel them as to what might have happened if their choice had been different, rather than saying, I told you so, or causing them to feel stupid, they will feel that we are supporting them and allowing them their own experiences without judging them. The lines of communication between us are then open, and they will be much more willing to talk with us about their problems the next time they have them. As in learning to ride the bicycle, if we held it up for them, they would never learn to master it on their own or become independent of us. We would be robbing them of their growth experience. Something else to consider as we're learning to enjoy the now is this. How many of us seem to think that in order for life to work for us, that first we have to have something before we can do something, before we can be something? For example, do we think we have to have money so we can do the fun things in life that we want to do so we can be happy. In reality, it's just the other way around. We are better off being first so that we can do, so that we can have. Having is the natural byproduct of being. Just what does being refer to? Be forgiving. Be non-judgmental. Be accepting. Be loving, be grateful, be caring, be understanding, be happy. Be willing to admit you don't know everything. Be the best you can be every day. Be efficient. Do the best job. Have the best pay. Little by little, you can become the kind of person that is most desirable for you to be. Then you will automatically do the best you can do. Let me say that one more time. When you are being the kind of person that is most desirable for you to be, then you will automatically do the best you can do. Then you will have the peace and whatever else that is most desirable in life for you to have. Here again, it's called the law of cause and effect. Having, no matter what it is, is the natural byproduct of what we are being and what we are doing. We reap what we sow. 
lest you are overwhelmed feeling that you need to be all of the above before you can do or have just remember that it's a process getting there and your being is developing in the now as you are accepting the challenges of each day eventually you can become what you want to be your true self and return to your perfect blueprint and the memory of your perfection as you can see instead of having doing being life works in better harmony when you are being doing having after all you're not a human having or a human doing you're a human being so how do i get to this point you may ask willing to be first processing negative feelings through the script is the perfect place to start as you process your feelings you are being it will be a great benefit to you to work through the hostilities and frustrations that you may have so that you can finally arrive at the space of live and let live of being enjoying the peace of the now we are not human havings or nor human doings but we are human beings so instead of having doing being life works best being doing having <laughs>